on Divorce Court today. High school sweethearts have weathered a terrible storm. Gregory was hit by a bus and spent three of their five years together in a wheelchair. Marisa nursed him back to hell, but now their marriage is falling apart. Marisa Fleming and Gregory Womack have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in divorce court starts now. Ms. Fleming, Mr. Womack, the two of you have been married for two and a half years. Even though you're only 21, you were high school sweethearts. They got together under a difficult circumstance. You want to get divorced now. You want transitional support. But before we get to that, Ms. Fleming, tell me what difficult circumstance brought you two together? Um, he was in a car accident. Mm -hmm. um, and when I first met him, I would wheel him in a wheelchair to mm -hmm. go to class every day. And then he couldn't walk at the time that I met him. Um, and then he started walking our junior, senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of like brought us together. Right, Through right. that, you know, just kind of like helping him get out of that. Right, Come right. to that. But you liked him though, right? <laughs> yeah, he was, he was funny. Um, you know, it was, you know, difficult in my life because I was going through a lot. And here I was with this kid that went through this traumatic experience. And I wanted that happiness that he had. So he was happy, even though he was in the wheelchair, he had a good, positive spirit. Yeah, he was doing willies through the hallways of high school and just laughing and joking. M Mr. Womack, is that, is that accurate? Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay. And um, when, did you, when did the relationship turn from aid and, and, and uh, fellow students to love? Our senior year of high school, we went to prom together. And how old were you when you got married? 18. 18, both of you, and you have no children. Whee! <laughs> I'm just so excited, I don't know what to do. I, you know, um, you've only been married two and a half years, Ms. Fleming. What's so wrong? Well, we don't have children because we don't have sex. At all? At all, no. We had sex on our honeymoon, and then after that, after, nothing, nothing else. I, I can say maybe within the two and a half years, maybe 10 times. Mr. Womack, as gently as possible, can you tell me what, why sex isn't happening? Your Honor, I love this girl with everything that's in me. And when I found out what she did, it broke my heart, you know? What did she do? Found out she cheated on me with her ex-boyfriend. When? This was like first year we were married. Did and you then... cheat on Mr. Womack during your first year of marriage? Your Honor, we have needs. You know, women have needs, and he wasn't given it. And I had, you know, I had to fulfill those needs. And, and I tried, you know, I brought it to him. I, I let him know, you know, that this isn't working out. You know, something needs to change. And he didn't fulfill my needs, so. She's contending that the sex stopped before the cheating happened. Is that accurate? No, Your Honor, we would, I mean, we would have sex, but not that much, because I would be working, you know? And I'm just, I would be tired when I come home from work. So it's like, come home. Sleep, eat dinner, and then go back to work. So right. For like a routine, so you know, I was just tired. Right. right. Too tired for this? Do you feel like, I mean, sex or no sex, do you feel like in your relationship she felt valued and honored? I mean, I know often, not often, but sometimes people who work hard and bring in money say, listen, I'm candling the bills. Uh, that should be enough without really nurturing the marriage. Do you think that maybe that might have been part of the problem? No, I mean, it's like, I look at it as if, like, when we were, when we first got together, I respected her, but at some times, you know, just being tired, and I didn't want her to feel like, you know, I only want to use you for sex. But that's just... Once you get, if you put a ring on her finger, she's never going to think, oh, she, all she wants, all he wants me for is sex. You've done the thing that we want, <laughs> which is married her. So I, I, I'm not quite sure where you got that from. Ms. Fleming, were you from a strict family? Did you feel like in order to date and go out, you had to get married? Because 18 is awfully young to kick off a marriage. Is no. that what happened? No, we, we were dating and people at my church did think that because we were dating that we needed to, you know, decide what we were going to do. And we started living together. We weren't having sex mm -hmm. at the time, but we were living together. Um, so there was a lot of pressure from the church and from my family for us to get married. So, mm -hmm. um, but marriage, sex was not just the main factor of saying, mm -hmm. okay, well, we're, we're going to get married just because we want to have sex. Were you ready to get married? I believe I was at the time, yes. Were you ready to get married? 
my mindset, I believe I was. But you don't believe so now? With the way things are going. Well, what's wrong? So far, I'm not hearing any bad stuff. I just feel like, Your Honor... I mean, the no sex. I get that part. I mean, no, no <laughs> doubt. I get that. But just, what's wrong? Like, with me finding out that she cheated, Your Honor, that I just felt like, you know, that's something that was precious to me with you being my wife. And you gave that away to another man, so why would, have, why would continue to have sex? And then she mm -hmm. would be sneaky, Your Honor, you know? I don't like it, but I will have to go through her phone and see if she's talking to other guys or whatever. You got to admit, Ms. Fleming, Within the first year of marriage, you go out and have sex with another guy. That's gonna just, I mean, a, a rude, raw, and ratchet. You see why he's upset, don't you? I mean, and you see why there's no sex, right? Even if there wasn't any before, there certainly isn't gonna be any now, because he's, he's not feeling, uh, he feels like you betrayed him in the most devastating fashion possible. Do you see that? Yeah, absolutely. But you're not, he's not telling the whole story. Well, he's, tell he's, the whole story. Well, that's what the problem was. He's saying, oh, I was tired and I come home from work and I'm tired. No, he lost his, his, his job within three months of us being married after blowing $100,000. Yeah, so, yeah, so he Where did he get $100,000? From his car accident. Did you blow through $100,000 relatively quickly? Yes. And, and you did so inappropriately, would you not? I wouldn't say inappropriately. Like some How long did the hundred grand last you? Half a year. That was inappropriate. I'm telling you, that was that's a lot of money to go through in a half a year. Was the hundred thousand going towards the medical? That I can understand. You can blow that in two weeks in the medical system. Well, yes, with everything that happened, majority of it went to medical, and some of it, you know, I bought us cars, fully furnished our apartment, bought her a car, I bought my family, helped them pay their bills, the debt that they were in. I was just caring for everybody, you know? It was $100,000. I know it sounds like, yeah, it's a lot, but, you know... Well, not when the medical... Not when the medical bills get through well, with right. you. If you had to pay the medical bills with that, that's nothing, you know? No, Your Honor, that's just the first settlement of it. He, after the 100000 he got another 8000 back from Social Security and another 12000 mm -hmm. Yeah, they give it to him in, in settlements. I just watched the money roll into the bank accounts. And, and roll out. Yep, and every time you would say, it's not our money, it's not your money, it's my money. Did you say, it's not your money, it's my money? Yes. Next, are flowers and chocolates a gift or a curse for this couple? Divorce isn't easy. If you need help with your breakup, call toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court. Real relationships, raw emotion. Testimony continues now. So, Mr. Womack, is it the cheating alone that brought you here? Or are there other issues that have brought you to the end of your marital road? Yes. What are they? Like, she would be really controlling. Explain that to me. It's like, she would, she would tell me that she wants... She would want me to... Like, she would want flowers every Friday, because the job that I worked at, I got paid weekly. Mm -hmm. And I worked at a chocolate store as well, so she would always want me to bring her chocolates and flowers. And I'm like, with us paying bills, you know, I can't really afford flowers and chocolates every Friday. But then when I would bring it to her, she would be like, oh, I don't want it anymore. And I'm like, after all this I went through to try and get this for you, now you don't want it because she said she felt like she had to tell me or ask me for it, and then when I would get it, she doesn't want it. Mrs. Fleming, would you do that? No, Your Honor, that's, no, I, I wouldn't do that. You well, know, tell it, me it, about it, the flowers and the chocolate. What? Well, you know, from the beginning, him paying the bills, no, I pay all the bills. He pays the electric and the gas bill, which come out to about $20 a month. You know, so, you know, that compared to your paychecks, you get a lot of money left over to get flowers and chocolates. You know, and it would... Well, how come you pay most of the bills? He has a full-time job. He doesn't make anything. I make more money than he does. Mo majority of the time, he works a part-time job, not a full-time. He's at home. He's at home, doesn't, do, doesn't clean the dishes, doesn't do the laundry, doesn't do anything. I pay most of the bills. Does she pay most of the bills? No, Your Honor, that's not correct. I pay, I pay, I help her pay some of the bills. You know, if she tells me, hey, I'll be short this much, I'll still make a way and do it. And I don't just sit at So home. she does pay most of the bills. When you say to me, hey, if you're short, I'll make it up, that means she pays most of the bills and you only fill in the gaps. No, but exactly. we, had, we had an agreement that she would be like, okay, you would pay this. Like, all she would just pay was rent. Rent was only 450 bucks. If she would be like, I couldn't come up with it, she would pay that. I would put the gas in our cars, 
I'll still give her money for food, still give her money for lunch at work, still pay, pay the electric, cable, internet. I would still pay our phone bills and stuff like that, you know? Is that how it was? You rent he, him everything else? No, Your Honor, because that electric bill went to collection, so he never paid that. My credit is ruined because he didn't pay any of the bills. No, I would ask him to pay, and then he'd be like, yeah, I'll pay it, and then I come home and the lights aren't on. Has she come home and the lights not been on, Mr. Womack? Your Honor, that is not correct. She's never came home and the lights are not on. She would tell me, like, they would send it as a disconnection notice, and then I would go pay it last minute. Her being controlling, she well, would... Well, now, Mr. Womack, you can see there that coming home to a disconnect notice can be disconcerting and that you're not handling your business because it's going to the point where you get a disconnect notice? Right? Yes. And... According to you, paying the electric bill was your responsibility. But with her being controlling, she wanted it done when she wanted it done, not when no, I had time to do it. No, she wanted it done when the electric company wanted it done, which is on time, so she wouldn't lose the lights. I mean, that's not being controlling, asking you to pay the electric bill before you get a disconnect notice. But, Your Honor, if she wants flowers and chocolate, and I'm using the money that I have to pay the electric bill, and then we will get into an argument over flowers and chocolate, versus the electric bill. It's did like, you, you start gotta that put flowers your, you and gotta... chocolate? You know, Mr... Did you start the flower and chocolate business? Did you or didn't you? <laughs> I did. Now, that's just silly, right? No, Your Honor, I mean, I'm not getting sex, so I need something. <laughs> I stand corrected. When Divorce Court continues, will Gregory's temper tantrums, flipping tables and throwing bikes end this marriage? Do you think Gregory's accident changed him so much that he is driving Marisa away? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. And join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Ms. Fleming, in your papers, you spent a lot of time telling me about his anger. In the beginning, you told me he was the happiest kid in the world, even when he was in a wheelchair. Why don't you tell me what this anger is and when he displays it? Because I don't see it. Yeah, and he, you know, he puts on a really good facade, but his anger is out of control. He'll flip furniture. He'll, he'll just yell randomly. You know, when, when I first encountered this, we got into an argument. Um, and, you know, I think it was just about what to eat. Like, he, you know, he's really indecisive. He can't make up his mind about, you know, different decisions. And I'll usually have to do that for him. And, you know, for once, I just wanted him to pick dinner. You know, someone for us to one. go. Yeah, just, just pick, pick one. Just, just pick, you know. And he gets upset and throws a glass behind the wall. And I'm standing right there in front of me. You know, and I'm like, this, you know, I, I never saw this before. I never saw this side of him at all and was just completely frazzled by it. Is it. Was that an unusual event, or is that been, has that become commonplace? Oh, no, that's commonplace, because now he just flips furniture completely when he gets upset. Are you angry, Mr. Womack? Sometimes. What are you angry about? Everything. Why? It's like, you know, if you, if you were the woman and you try to get, you try, you feel like you're giving her your all and nothing you do, she accepts, or nothing she, like, looks at, like, even if you try, she might not see you trying, but you might feel like you're trying, and then you get, like, I just get upset. What things does, do you do for her that you think she doesn't appreciate? Like, there's been countless of nights where she's like, she's tired, and I'm like, I'm tired as well. And, like, what I did for work, Your Honor, is I would lift furniture, I would lift refrigerators, you know, with being disabled, I still did what I had to do for us. Right. She wouldn't understand that, so she'd be like, I want a massage. I would give her a massage until she falls asleep. Every night, she'd be like, can I get a massage tonight? Can I get a massage tonight? And I'm like, sure. And I would be just frustrated. Were you asking for that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, something to make up for the lack of no sex, of sex. you know? Right. <laughs> Do you think that's why he's angry? Because you asked no, for too Your many Honor, things? No, Your Honor, no. He's not, he's not angry about that. He's, he's upset because of his car accident and what happened with that, because his family is controlling. You know, and that, that's where the feud comes from. He says, I'm controlling. No, his family controls everything. In what that he manner? Does. What do they do? Money. You, one day, he comes to pick me up, says he has the right money in the car, $500. Comes in, I come out 
500 is magically gone. It's just gone. He has no reconciliation of where it went. Are you taking care of your other family's economic situation before you're taking care of the one at home? No, Your Honor. Because at the same time, if my family needed a place to stay, they would come stay with me. But I look at it as if it's me and my wife. She is my immediate family now. My mom and them, they would have, they would, they would have the things that they would need. My family, they, I would, I would still, I would try and help them out. If I had it, I had it. If I didn't, I didn't. With her being controlling, she wanted it done. It was either Marisa's way or the highway. I hear that. I hear what you're saying, but you have to take care of home first before you took a care, take care of the home that you used to be in. And, and, and I'm thinking that maybe that didn't happen because she was coming home to collection notices knowing that if you had money, you would give it to her family. And I think that's what's upsetting her. That's why she's saying, hey, you're doing it wrong. You feel like she's trying to control you, but she doesn't think you have a, your priorities straight. Are you with me? Yes. I should have you home with me in the evening when I can't sleep. <laughs> right out. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. It's time for you to call 1-800-282-1991 to answer today's question. You'll receive some valuable offers. Call now. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. So, Ms. Fleming, you're done. You've had enough. I'm done. There's I'm, no I'm sex. Done. There's, you know, the, the money isn't regular. You're cooking. You're, you're, you're doing all the work. There's no reason to be married anymore, I, basically, is your position. Exactly, yeah, because yeah. I feel like I'm babysitting. Yeah. Uh, you're seeking transitional support in the amount of $1,000. Explain the amount and why you think you should get it. Well, Your Honor, uh, tolling up all the bills and my credit that he ruined because he didn't pay all the bills on time, you know, it makes it hard for me to get an apartment because my credit's ruined or another car because my credit's ruined. Um, you know, and he, he did buy the car, but those cars went away in three months. The engines blew, you know, and they, they, they didn't shape. last. No. And they didn't last. Mr. Mr. Womack, is any of that bear any resemblance to you? No, Your Honor, that's not true. I bought her a car, and what she did with it is she went and got a title loan to give her mother money to move her to another house. Didn't Did you do that? No, Your Honor. That money that I got from the title loan was to pay the bills that he didn't pay. That's not correct, Your Honor, because when I asked her where she got the money from, she said my aunt gave it to me for a wedding present. And I'm like, how much was it? She's like, $700. I'm like, no one just gives away $700. No, she... Your Honor. Well, that's <laughs> given. No, he gave his mother $5,000 $5, to move to Minnesota. No, so you, you don't Did just... you give your mom 5000 to move to Minnesota? Yes, Your Honor, to, buy, to give my brothers and sisters a better life that I didn't get to have. We were staying with my mother. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mr. Womack, you say you want to uh, save this marriage. Is that right? That's right, Your Honor. What do you think is worth saving? You don't want to have sex with her because, you, you know, she did that to you and you can't get over it, and nobody can blame you for that. This is, Your Honor, when people get married and you say your vows, it's to death do we part, to cherish and to hold for good and through bad. The outcome of our marriage was maybe bad, but, you know, years down the line, maybe it could be good. Maybe I will change. Maybe well, she will change. Not maybe I will change, maybe she will change. Nobody just changes. Someone makes an effort to change. Right. Are you looking to make an effort to change? Yes, Your Honor, I am. You're still angry with her about that cheating thing, and I don't blame you. I mean, it, it, it's a hard thing to get over, and I can't tell you to get over that. Uh, I think you were irresponsible with the money. I think you're a little laissez-faire, lack lackadaisical, and, da -da 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 -da, and the money just slips through your hand. And she feels insecure by that because money slips through the hand. She's getting disconnection notice, but, you know, mom's got five grand to go to Minnesota. Upsets her, you know what I mean? But I don't think this is fixable. Transitional support is, is, is money that one gives another whose uh, their contribution was housework, household duties, and their, con their other contribution was uh, finances. I don't think that ever happened here. Uh, I think you both contributed uh, equally or, you know, depending on what his financial status was. And so I really can't uh, give you transitional support. I, w I can't give you my best wishes, though. Good luck to you both. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. <laughs> Great.
Gregory and Marisa agree with the judge's ruling and have moved on with their lives. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court. On Divorce Court today. He was only 18 when he met the cougar next door, but Darrell and Cookie have stayed together for nine years. He can't keep up with her expensive taste, plus he's not getting any younger. Cookie Dunn and Darrell Day have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Ms. Dunn, you and Mr. Day have been together for nine years. You do not want to be together anymore. You believe that one of the issues that is causing this difficulty is the fact that you are not, uh, 15 years Mr. Day's senior. Is that correct? Yes. And you, in fact, have a child of the same age as Mr. Day. Yes. Both a 27-year-old daughter and, a, and him. Yes. Now, why don't you tell me... You've been together nine years, so what, he was 18? Yes. When you got together and yes. you were 33. Yes. What did you find interesting in an 18-year-old at 33? It was his conversation. He seemed mature. Uh-huh. And... Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Oh, please! <laughs> well, some people call me a Kruger, but... A Cougar? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And you could say, well, yeah. You like young guys? I like younger men. Nothing wrong with Cause it. Because old men, they... I can't do that. No. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I, I can't be with an old man. What is it? I'm gonna be honest with you, Your Honor. Roll over, he tired. And you need... No, I can't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Day, how are you doing over there? I'm fine. Okay. Now, when you got together with Ms. Dunn, uh, did you believe it was going to end up into such a long-term relationship? No, when I first met her, I didn't think it was going to be really much of anything, because I was younger, she looked older than me, so I didn't think it was going to go any further. Well, now, when you find out, found out how old she was, was that a deterrent to you at all? Did that bother you? No, I found how old she was, it was... I didn't feel anything. I just yeah. felt like she was an attractive woman, and I thought that maybe it could work if... Maybe if I was older, because I didn't know she liked a young woman or not. Right, right. But, yeah, the youth was part of it. But <laughs> you said something interesting in your papers, Ms. Dunn, that I just have to repeat to you. Now, mind you, you've got six children. Yes. Ages 11, 21, 22, 23, 25, and 27. Yes. Then you said to me, I always thought Terrell would mature with me. What does that mean in the context of the... The ages mean that he would think like me, or uh, basically he thinks like a child. Because he was one. Huh? Because he was one. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. But I mean, you've had, not... eight, you've had 18 year olds in your house. Yes. So you know how they are. Yeah, but I know some 18 year old is really mature, like. I am myself, but he's not mature. And when did you figure that out? About... <laughs> at the age of 21. But you stuck in with him for another, what, seven years? Yes. Because? Because I do care for Terrell, you know? I'm not gonna lie, I do care for him. But we do have issues that needs to be worked on. But I got to a point where it don't have to be worked on. It really yeah. don't. Tell me what, what some of those issues are. Okay, I send Terrell's to the store because I'm used to expensive taste. Mm -hmm. I send him to the store and I tell him, buy me some expensive makeup. He bring me back something for $2. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> you sent your man to the store to buy you makeup? Because I was in the hospital at the time and I was coming home from the hospital and I wanted to put on makeup. And I know it sounds funny, but I love my makeup. So uh -huh. I sent him to the store. He brought me back cheap makeup, Your Honor, like something my little baby would play did with. You, did you give him a specific label Yes, and name? I did. Yes, I did. 
I'm trying to get with you on this, Mr. Dunn. But if I sent my husband to the store to buy makeup, <laughs> after you picked him up, because he'd fall on the floor laughing, he would say, no, baby, you look fine. I'm not going down that aisle. But I didn't, I, I just didn't, I need some color to me, so, because I was pale. But you can't get mad that he doesn't buy the right okay, makeup. Okay, what about going to the supermarket? We'll talk I'll about him, that. Okay, I'll get him a Pacific Foods to, you know, bring, he brings me back oodles and noodles like I'm a baby. Well, and what did you back, ask for? I tell him to get ragu spaghetti sauce. He bring me something that says, bravo. <laughs> I would talk to you, Mr. Day, but there's really no point. She hasn't said anything that made sense yet. No. <laughs> I'm used to expensive stuff like Mac, um, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. Did you send him to a Mac store to yes, get some makeup? Did no, he still didn't bring me back Mac. Ask him what he did with the money. He'll tell you. What did you do with the money? It was a scratch off. Now, do that make sense? No. Mr. Day, mm -hmm. did she give you a month? Did she give you money for a specific thing, and you bought a cheap version of their of that so you could no, use I, the rest of the money for scratch offs? Okay, here it is. I brought I brought the, I brought the makeup that she um, asked for, but didn't have the color, so I changed the name. So the money that I saved for a scratch off with it, I still not came back with the one, makeup. Not just one, Your Honor. Not just one. He brought twenty of them, and he don't be winning. Sometimes. Yeah. See, okay. Mr. Day. I'm gonna work with you for a minute. <laughs> See? <laughs> what is your primary issue with Ms. Dunn? That she buys expensive things and doesn't use it after one time. Can she afford expensive things? Yeah, she can. And you, you're mad because she only uses them once? Yeah. Look at it right there, they're on the screen. Those are my pocketbooks in my closet. Most of them don't I have any... I just didn't line them up. Most mm -hmm. of them don't have any wear in it, no nothing. It just sits there with tags on it, everything. Do you, do you buy stuff and not use them? I have carried all of them Once. one time. If I don't got to shoot the match, why would I carry it again? I gotta say, Mr. See? Day, <laughs> Mr. Day, that isn't much of a purse collection, I tell you. I mean, as far as numbers are concerned, mm -hmm. a whole lot of us do way worse than that. You, you know what I mean? Women like a lot of purses. It's a weird thing, but but, but, but they do. I, I don't... But I couldn't get the shoes... I don't shoes. see that as excessive. No, I couldn't get the shoes because she caught me, but the shoes at the bottom don't even have dirt under the sole. Is the purpose of your purchasing to purchase and not necessarily to have and use? Some people get high off the, the act of purchasing. And that's... That, that, that's how they fulfill themselves. And once they purchased it, they put it aside because it's already served its purpose. No, Your Honor, to be honest, I buy it. Okay, that's my Gucci glasses and everything else. I buy it. Well, he should know how I was when he first met me. If anybody have a cell phone, they got a hundred dollar bill money case on it. That should have told him I love money. I love nice stuff. Everything I got is name brand. He knew how I I don't was. understand the fascination with name brand, I gotta say. I really don't. I, I I can't imagine me paying somebody to advertise for them. I do it for my eleven year old daughter too. Oh, don't do that. Cause my kids is grown, so my eleven year old, I do it for her too. Next, is Cookie's bling lifestyle ruining this relationship? Or is it Terrell who's developed outside interests? Your mama warned you not to marry your mate. If she was right and divorce is your best option, call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real problems, real solutions. Divorce Court continues. You know why I'm going to yell at you about that? Because you're teaching her the wrong thing. You're teaching her that value is what other people see as opposed to what she knows and what she has upstairs. You're teaching her that bling is important and not, and, and not you know, respect and character and all that kind of stuff. Bling doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything at all that in, instead of paying $500 for a purse, pay $100 for a purse and put 400 into her college fund. Yeah, she got money in the bank. Yeah, but, 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 but no, 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 no. 
College will cost you $50,000 a year. You got that kind of bank? No, but... And you'll never have that kind of bank because you're paying for college for all those dudes that already have millions of dollars okay, by can buying I their products. When it comes to my daughter, I do teach her the respect to go to school. When I say I put nice things on her, it don't mean I don't bling her out, no. She do wear her little Levi's, her Converse. I let her chose what she want to wear, as long as it's appropriate. I don't take my daughter to the store, you gonna wear that, you gonna wear that. I let her pick her clothes off because she's a Converse child. She like a lot of Converses. So I, I buy that for her. Don't, don't teach her to appreciate material things no, and I think wear... that they're poor. They learn that from you, though. No matter what you buy them, if that's okay, how see... you live, don't listen to... Mm -mm. If that's how you live your life, she'll think that's something to aspire to, and it's not. So I suppose to honestly wear something that I don't want to wear? Because that's the same I thing he be doing in the clothes store. He'll hold something up and be like, wear this. I say it's $12.99. What I'm saying to and you is, wearing. what I'm saying to you is. I don't care, I'm not wearing that. OK. <laughs> I can't help you. I that, don't need that, help, Your Honor. But what, what I do want... I need help. No, you don't I, need help. You know, help. I'm trying no, no, to say, no. get, get somewhere reasonable, and I'm not doing anything. You their own opinion. I understand that. But what I'm trying to make people understand, you all see what he be giving me to wear. Have you seen how he dresses? That's how he wants me to look. How does he dress? That's ill belly. He look like where I come from. I come from North Carolina. That's how he looks. Why like does that from. bother you? Your Honor, imagine me in that. Why does it bother you that he wears that, though? Because the shirt is two times bigger than him. Then the, sh the shorts is cut off with scissors. And those are not it, even it, his shoes, they mine. Ms. Ms. Dunn, we live in it. <laughs> those are my Miss Miss Dunn, did she did he look like that when when you met him? No, he had on sneaker jeans, a plain fitted shirt. Now he went from that to hell belly, hell belly Terrell. <laughs> and he over there laughing. I don't think it's funny. Cause look how that look. When I was in the hospital, Miss Dunn, Miss Dunn, let me Ms. No, no, don't tell me to wait a minute. That's not appropriate. I'm sorry, but, but just be quiet me. or sit down, cause I don't want to hear anymore. Mr. Day, do you ever get to talk in your own home? Yeah, yes, I do. What is your main complaint about Mrs. Dunn? That she complains about the food that I buy, the expensive clothes that she, has, she buys is my problem with her. And she says the problem with me is that I don't buy name brand clothes or appreciate the name to spend money for it. Is that really something so important to, to, no, to dissolve a relationship line. over? He's sitting over that line. He do have a name brand phone. He got name brand stuff. Now he over that line. Oh, Miss Dunhush. I do. No, but Terrell no, over that stop, line. Stop. Stop. I would explain it to you, but it, I might burst a blood vessel or something. I tell me something important that is ending this relationship, because okay. I don't think whether or not you buy a name brand bag it's is not important. About that. Well, then tell me something important. One day, my friend came over, right? It was a Friday. And that Saturday, we left Terrell in the house by himself. I come home that Sunday by myself. Now, to remind you, he went to work. Why do my room smell like fun up in the air? S -s Smells like what? If it smells like somebody will have it fun. Up in the air. Oh, having fun up yeah, in the fun, air. Yeah, fun, okay. fun, fun. Get so you say it down. smelled like sex? Yes. Okay. What happened next? I asked Terrell. I said, Terrell, well, because when I sat down on the bed, I said, mm -hmm, Whoa, what is that smell? He claimed it was his feet. It was not his feet. When divorce court continues, is what Terrell calls out in his sleep proof of infidelity. 
Do you think their age difference is driving Cookie away from Terrell? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now, 1-800-282-1991. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. As gently as possible, can you tell me how you resolved that situation and made a determination as to whether or not Mr. Day was having a relationship outside okay, or an outside relationship? Because after that, that Monday, I went to my doctor, my GYN doctor, mm -hmm. and I asked him some personal questions. He showed me, he indicate with a man cheating what happens in the process of that mm -hmm. and that will happen. There was evidence, it was tell, evidence. Tell, tell physical sign that your doctor told you about, and yes. he, in fact, had that telltale physical sign. Yes. Did I get that right? Yes. Mr. Dave, have you ever cheated on Ms. Dunn? No. Never, not one time? Never. Nine years, no, I did not. Other than that one incident, Ms. Dunn, are, are there any other indications that he has, in fact, cheated on you? He keeps telling me no. It was many a times where he talked in his sleep and he called me by another name. And he well, told me... In what context? Okay, he was asleep one day, uh -huh. and he rolled over. I was still up looking at the TV. I got called a girl name. I can't tell her name, because, you know, yeah. she's irrelevant, she's not here. But then I heard something he was saying, talking to somebody, just pull your shorts down, just hurry up, pull your shorts down. In his sleep? In his sleep. <laughs> it's a dream that she says, she recalls me saying to another woman to take down her shorts, but she has evidence of men lower body parts in her phone. How did you find that? I went through her phone. You went through her phone, and mm -hmm. what did you, and you saw men pictures of men yeah. with lower body parts. Lower body just... parts. Now were there clothes on them, or were, they, were they, it was just out? It was just out. <laughs> so you know people who just send pictures of their their nether regions on the internet. You know people yes, like I that. Yes, I do, and I tell them do not send me nothing like that. To be honest, I don't want to see nobody naked body. Right. That don't entice me. Right. And really. Well, getting out of that. Yeah, now I hear you. I hear you. But that don't entice me. I got you. Do you think that his suspicions of you are more valid than your suspicions of him? Yeah, he thinks so. And you kind of think so too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. It's time for you to call 1-800-282-1991 to answer today's question. You'll receive some valuable offers. Call now. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Ms. Dunn, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach this cheating thing one more time, see if I can get a, get, a, get a better indication. You put a tracking device on his phone? Yes, I did. And what did that tracking device reveal to you? It was on a whole different... Avenue. He said that's where he would work it, in the store up the block from where we live. And uh, it indicated to me that he was over in the projects across from us. Now, that was 3 30, no, 3 o'clock to 3 30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. But he told me he both said let him out for lunch. Because okay. I called him. All right. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. You won $1,000 from Mr. Day saying that uh, you were getting ready to relocate to Massachusetts without him in a month, and you want him to pay your relocation expenses. Explain why you believe you're entitled to that. Because it been time that I gave Terrell money, and he didn't do the right thing with it. He wastes money. Mm -hmm. He's over there talking about my name brand stuff, but he wastes money on things that he don't even win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I'm not going to talk to you, Mr. Day, about that because I'm not giving her any money. I'm going to say that I'm going to say this, Mr. Day. You waste money too. You do. Uh, you both wasted money. You, you know, uh, you went into the. You kind of got some magical thinking going on there, Mrs. Dunn. You got with a guy who's a, a 15 year your junior. You thought, and then you you're mad because he's immature and childish. You, the, the, you know, you know what an 18 year old is like. I got 18 year olds at home. I've seen a whole lot of them. They're all equally silly, and and only only because that's appropriate at 18. 
is a fair amount of silly. And for you to think that you would get something other than silly at 18 was silly on your part. And has, so, uh, Mr. Day, move on, move forward, enjoy your life. You seem like a nice guy, and there will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. I, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't care. Cookie and Terrell agree with the judge's decision, and Cookie is finalizing her plans to move out of state. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1 877 311 2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court. On Divorce Court today. Friends, since elementary school, Jay and Thomas have been living together for the last three years. She says it's time to give up his dream to become a singer-songwriter, or else it's time for her to go. Jay Jones and Thomas Rosser have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Ms. Jones, Mr. Rosser, the two of you have a significant history. You've known each other for 20 years. You've been uh, dating for 10. You've been living together for three. Ms. Jones, you have brought him here because you say his uh, pursuit of his career has for all intents and purposes, ended your relationship, and now you want to leave and you need some assistance in so doing, and you, you've come to ask me for that. Uh, Mr. Rosser, you say you do believe that this relationship has run its course, run its course and that she doesn't appreciate what you are bringing to the table. So, Ms. Jones, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me what has gone so wrong after so long? Um... Thomas and I are uh, in a financial bind, shall I say. Okay. I basically pay for everything. Um, so, so he's not in a financial bind. You are. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I'm in the financial bind. I'm the breadwinner. Um, I work long hours to support him. I um, always try to be there for him. Um, I pay mainly, mostly, all the bills. I pay mm -hmm. for his studio time, his clothing, uh, his lunchings, his meetings with uh, important people, as she says. Um, I guess I'm just the breadwinner. I'm tired of it. I guess you can say that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ross, is she accurate about the bills that, that she Absolutely does pay not. for everything? Why don't you tell me how you say it goes? Well, I mean, Judge, basically, um, it's, it's, we share certain expenses. And, um, there have been times where I, you know, I was at a low point. There have been times where she was at a low point, but, you know, You cover way, each other. Correct. Do you have um, a steady income? Um, right now, I do. When you say right now, how long <laughs> is right now? Uh, yeah. Maybe, that? maybe for the past, I don't know, six, seven months. Six or seven months? Yes, is that accurate? He's been contributing the last six or seven when months? When you say contributing, how much are you contributing? Because our bills are not, uh, you know, $50. How much did you bring into the household this past month? I mean, I, I paid the cell phone bill, the... Um, yeah. The, um... Right. So she's accurate. She does pay the no, vast no, no, no. majority no, she's of bills. Not. No, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. <laughs> she, I mean... Buying groceries... Hang on, hang on. Let the man finish. He's working on it. Yeah, like, you know, I usually buy groceries, too, then she brought it up. Um, the cell phone bill. Um... You said that. The water yeah. bill. Um... It's the $40. Department store bill that sh that she accrued. Uh, a credit card. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. Did he pay the credit card? I, I guess he did. I bought the clothes for him. I mean, it's not like I bought them for myself. Okay. Okay. I, I think I get the picture. I think I get the picture. <laughs> but but uh, that doesn't de de define. Some relationships are like that. I you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, my mother never paid a bill that my father didn't bring her the money for because he was the primary breadwinner and he was, you know, she was at home. So... He, he was being a man. Yeah. I know a lot of women who are primary breadwinners. A lot oh, of them. Yeah. A lot of them. I Whee! think... <laughs> 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 I gotta, so, right. there must be something else missing or wrong. 
I mean, I guess I can say that um, he's into, you know, the industry, shall I say. So he's trying to pursue his, you know, business. I mean, his music, um, shall I say. And I used to support him more so than I do now. But mainly now I have to work more to support the bills. I have a five-year-old daughter. So right. the bills have to be paid. I can't. Ms. Jones, Run after you're him. still talking about that. I understand that you pay the majority of the oh. bills and that you work a lot. That's okay with pe I mean, I know a lot of families who one person does that, but they're okay with it. Something else must be wrong. There's no quality time. Not like how it used to be. Like I used to be able to come to the studio and, you know, witness, you know, what he's actually doing or, you know, the days that he will have a show, I would be told in advance about the shows. I wouldn't be told like head on day of the day of the shows. Um, a lot of shows that he does are for, you know, to get his music out there. They're mm -hmm. for no free. Money. Yeah, shall you say. That's not true. Do you get paid for your gigs? I do. Yeah? I mean, at first, I didn't. This was back, back in like 2012, 2011. Mm -hmm. You know, I was getting the name out for myself. Um, but now I do get paid shows. I mean, she may I, not. Yeah, she... I, I get that. I don't want to talk about money anymore. I really don't. That's the issue. Yeah. That's the only issue? You mean no. to tell me? With, with, with no, no, name. hang on, hang on, hang on. You mean to tell me that if he made more money, you'd be fine? You wouldn't be here? Money is a big issue. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And if you don't like, you know, supporting him... I love him. And I feel like um, I've been there so long that it's kind of like... You know, you put you you know how you invest in something, mm -hmm. and you kind of want to see where it goes or what your outcome is gonna be. Mm -hmm. I guess that's where I'm at right now. It's like I invested so much, and I've been patient. I've done the good girl role. I've so been there. So what is it you've been patient for? What it is it? Are you you looking to get married? Is what you're telling me? Yes. And he don't want to marry you. Well, we've been together long enough. I haven't gotten a ring or asked. Mr. Um, Rosser, why don't you tell me what you believe, other than the money, the primary problem in the relationship you have with her? Well, my, my biggest um, concern, Judge, is that um, she's insecure. Um, the, the relationship was, like, slowly declining um, due to different insecurities that she has. Um, Give me a story. Well, about that demonstrates her insecurities. Well, I work with a lot of female artists. Mm -hmm. I write mm -hmm. for a lot of female artists. And, um, you know, we, we usually do spend long hours in the studio because that's, that's what the, the industry calls for. Um, she feels that it's something going on there because she wants me to devote all my time to um, the house. But, you know, like, like I'm, I'm, I know I'm in a mind frame right now where, like, I kind of have tunnel vision. Um, she knew what my aspirations mm -hmm. were before we um, moved in. Even when we, you know, were, were dating, she always knew that knew I was... Knew what you in... were about. Exactly. And that you were, you, you, you had, a, a, had a path that you were on, and you were, you were focused on that path, and that was your primary interest. Is yes, that accurate? Mm -hmm. Ms. Jones, you're upset. Yes, I'm very upset. Very upset. Why don't... I... The... Tell him right now what it is you're feeling and what it is you want from him. Because I can't, I, I can't quite find it. These studio times and these times that you're, you know, with your female friends, or shall I say these females that you're writing for, you take them out on luncheons. One incident, I, we went to um, a friend of mine. We were out mm -hmm. in the same spot that he was out. And he was having a luncheon with the same female friend that he was in the studio recording with, which was, you know, cool. And I didn't introduce myself to her when I met her the first time. This time, he kind of hesitated when I walked up on him to introduce me to her, as if it was something between them. Next, what secret did Thomas try to hide that came to light only because Jay has a severe allergy to latex? Your mama warned you not to marry your mate. If she was right and divorce is your best option, call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real people, real conflict, real judgments. Divorce Court continues. So, Ms. Jones, explain to me about this woman. Last time I saw her, we were at the studio, and I was not introduced to her. Mm -hmm. All I did was saw her in passing. The next time that I saw the same it's woman with him, oh, he hesitated. 
to introduce me to her as I walked up on them at the same restaurant that we always go to, which was kind of odd to me because they were sitting in a corner. They weren't out visibly being seen or anything like that. There was this one time uh, Thomas and I had, you know, intercourse or whatever, and I'm highly allergic to latex. So I ended up going to the doctor, and it was a minor situation, but I hadn't had this situation. And last time I had the situation was when I found out I was allergic to, to, latex. to latex. Exactly. So, so you believe he was exposed to latex exactly. and exposed you to exactly. latex. And exactly. the one way to get exposed to latex in that circumstance is use a condom with another woman. Mr. Exactly. Rosser, your response. I want to let you know that during the course of this whole 10 year period, that you know we were on and off dating, this was during that time. So you so, weren't living together then. So we weren't we weren't living we were not living together at that time. I got gotcha. you. I but, got gotcha. you. But, but but since we've been under one roof, you know, there there was no cheating on my behalf. I can't okay. speak for her. But Mr. I, Mr. You know. Rosser, you tell me how you feel about this relationship. I mean, why are you unhappy with her? I'm unhappy with her because I I mean not insecure. I'm not insecure. Here, let, let me it's have not me. even it, it has nothing to do with me, the insecurity. It's just I'm her not as insecure. a person. I have signs. For me, I, hang I, on. I no, no, let the man speak. He's, you know, he's not a very verbal guy. He's not. He's not voluble. He's. He, he, he has a difficult. <laughs> and no, no, but there's not. There's nothing wrong with it. My, my husband's saying, wait, I can get ten words out of him in a day. I'm happy. I'm going to give you some time to get it together and say what you need to say about what you feel about the nature of your relationship that makes you want to go. I think it's his image. I think he's trying to withhold his image. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm just going to keep it real. I mean, I, I, think, I think I've lost interest. So. Had you heard that before, Ms. No. Jones? When Divorce Court continues, did the paternity question drive Thomas out of this relationship? Do you think this couple can stop arguing and patch up their relationship? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now, 1-800-282-1991. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Ms. Jones, I was trying to give Mr. Rosser an opportunity to speak how he feels and to speak his mind. I think he's unable to do that. I, I don't know why. It might be because he's afraid to hurt you. Uh, it might be because uh, he's comfortable in the economic situation that he's in. And, in, and if he expressed his real uh, feelings that, that ec the economics of the situation would change, I don't know what. Or maybe some guys would just have a hard time putting their thoughts or feelings into words. So what I'm going to do is tell you what he said, because she has a right to know. She really, really does. She's putting money and time and in investing in a relationship that is not going to happen. He said, I admit I have been distant, and, that, and that's because I've lost interest. Five years ago, I thought her child was mine until she revealed it wasn't. That's a problem. She said, you can't just be in a stagnant relationship, and if it's heading that way, no one will put any effort to repair it. I think that's what's happened with both of us. So I said, whatever. Now I'm good, and I want to move on. It is clear we are both on different paths, and the thrill is gone. When you are just doing it in vain, I don't want to live, do anything in my life in vain anymore. If that's not a goodbye letter, I don't know what is. I've never heard him say that. Like, I've never, like, I've never, like, we used to be best friends. Anything we could talk about, we could talk about. Now, we don't talk about anything. If we do, it's a hay and a bye, like you said, five words out of a day. And that, that has not always been the case. Now, my daughter, we were at an off and on point. He, you know, I told him that she may not be his, but he's always been there. Right. Lately, it's more like, you know, that's my stepdaughter, or that's her daughter, or, you know, we're not doing any things, or, you know, it's like, to me, it's like, it's something else. There's someone else. There's got to be something else, because 
How I just you, told you but, what that something was. Yeah, but I just, I, I, it was very specific and very clear. What did you not hear? I guess I'm not hearing it. How could you just not want somebody that's that's doing the most for you? Oh, Ms. Jones, here, 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 here's, that's something a lot of women say. I'm here for you. I'm doing everything for you. I can't believe you don't want me. People have the right to want who they want, even if who they want isn't you. And no matter how much you do for a person, if he's not invested in a relationship with you, the amount of things he, you do for him is, has no meaning. Do you can understand? I, can I say something? So, I feel, I, <laughs> um, I also admit, forgot to mention that, you know, she's, she's the type of person, Shay, not she, she uh, is the type of person to try to, like, you know, throw up in your face as far as, like, what she did. You know, knowing that, you know, it, it's, you know, my situation or whatever like that. So, d I mean, it kind of hurt, too, mm -hmm. you know, knowing... Mr. Rosser, here, I want, I want both of you to hear me. I'm not saying you're a bad guy. I'm not saying that at all, unless you're, sta you, you're not mentioning the fact that there is no future and, and I don't really interest in you because you want her to continue to support her support you despite the fact that you were not into her. She doesn't support me. Well, yes, she does. I do support her. That, That's yes, what she, she told you. I no. might not be able to make it to That's the show. That's what you told me. Because when I asked you how many bills you paid, you, 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 you didn't pay any major bills. Exactly. You told me that, okay? You told me. If I listened to nothing she said, you told me that. So if that's your if that's your position, that's your bad. That makes you a bad person. That makes you a user. That makes you someone who is <laughs> who is allowing a person for whom he has no interest to support you, and you give her the vague notion that you st that you're still in it, and that's just wrong. That's just wrong. If that's what you're doing. It may not be what you're doing. What you may be doing is you don't know how to tell her it's over. You may not know how to tell her you're not interested. You may not know, uh, you may not be comfortable with it. But what I'm saying to you is people have a right to be with who they want to be, even if it isn't you. And what you have to do is not ask, why can't he love me? It's like, how far is the door? Let me pack my stuff and find a dude that does. You, you see what I'm saying? Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Fans are talking about what just happened on Divorce Court on Facebook. Like us and join the discussion on Facebook now. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Say what you were going to say. I think it's just because I've known him for so long. You know how you just get set in your ways. And it, I mean, I'm young. So, you know, I mean, like, I still have a lot of time to, you know, if I needed to, if I wanted to. I guess I'm just. You need to. I know you don't want to, but you need to. My mother also used to tell me all the time, never make a man tell you he doesn't want you more than once. He's told you in 90 different ways that he doesn't want you. When he doesn't come home, when he doesn't talk to you, when he doesn't share like he used to, when he, you know, I mean, that's saying, I don't want you. And that doesn't have anything to do with your value as a person, and it doesn't make him a bad guy unless he's using you for your cash. I'm not using him. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm not. Okay, fine. But what I'm telling you, Ms. Jones, is you need to step. You, women, often, we've invested so much time and money in a guy, we just can't, we, we, we can't cut our losses and go. But it never gets better. You can't, you, you know, never beg anybody to love you. It never works. Never beg anybody to love you. You've got your money. You've got your, your, your future. You've got a career. You've got, you're going to be a dental assistant. This you do not need. You need love and care. Now, you asked me for transitional support, and I really wish you hadn't mentioned that, because you can't get transitional for support from a guy you've been supporting. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I wish it did. You know, you want, you know, want months I'm... for this, that, the other. That's not how it works. I think the law needs to change a little bit, because I think I found these days a lot of women are been in the circumstance where they're supporting economically, doing all the cooking and cleaning and everything, and then end up giving, giving support to the other right. person who was contributing nothing. But the support was to recognize that you were 
taking care of home while he was taking care of money. And sometimes you're taking care of everything. So the law has not quite made that shift. So I certainly wouldn't take anything from you, but I can't give anything to you except my advice to roll, bounce, jump. <laughs> if you were my daughter, we'd be on the floor <laughs> wrestling right now. I'd, 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 have, I'd be just a beating you on the head with this, <laughs> with this gavel. Girl, have you lost your mind? Don't be with a man that doesn't want you. You're beautiful, you're smart, you can find one that will. Just don't sell yourself that short. Don't, okay? There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. Jay and Thomas have taken the judge's ruling to heart and have moved on. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court. On Divorce Court today, does one huge romantic gesture guarantee a free pass for life? Taja says Adrian did one great thing, then uses that good deed to get out of all of his bad behavior with other women. Taja Hugel and Adrian Patterson have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Ms. Hugel, you say you met Mr. Patterson at an extraordinarily difficult time in your life. Why don't you tell me what happened? I met Adrian about like two years after I had um, was in, involved with a sexual assault and I got pregnant with my son. Um, I found out I was pregnant and I decided to keep him. Mm -hmm. I moved to West Virginia, which I have, my dad's side of the family lives out there. And I was visiting my brother and he was staying with my brother at the time. Mm -hmm. And we started dating after that. And he did something extraordinary, though, at yeah, some point. Um, after about a year with us dating, he signed the birth certificate and gave my son his last name. <laughs> Mr. Patterson, I'm sure I, I, I believe I know why you did that, but why did, and I'm, I'm so glad you did, but why, why did you do that? Because I was my little man. I loved him. I and he's still your him. little man? Yes, ma'am, to this day, till I die. He's my son. He ain't had no dad. That's wonderful. That, 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 I'm the only dad he know, and I'm always be his dad. What happens? I mean, to me, that's an extraordinary start. I mean, a, a difficult time for you, a grand thing for you to do. He loves your son a, a lot more than some natural fathers come in here and take care of their own kids. So I, I really got to give you mad props on that. What has gone wrong since then? Well, since then, I dealt with cheating, um, a lot of flirting with other females on different websites. He's very controlling. And he, I feel like he uses my son as the fact that we have to stay together. And I don't feel like because he signed my son's birth ticket that I have to deal with the stuff that he does to me because of my son. Okay. And I stayed this long because he is a great father to my mm -hmm. son. But at some point, when am I supposed to be happy? When you say he's controlling, what do you mean? What does he, he what does he do? He dictates my every move. He, he, he wants to tell me when, I, when and when I cannot go out. He, even if I go out with one of his family members, he has a problem with it. At first, he was telling me that I needed to ask him for permission to go out to different places. But even when I would do that and ask him permission to go out to certain places, I either get an attitude then, or when I come home at two, three o'clock in the morning when I'm ready to maybe make love, I have to deal with his attitude and it mess up the whole evening. Mr. Patterson, why don't you tell me what you think about her going out and, and, and how accurate is she with respect to the issue of you controlling what she does? Well, Your Honor, it's cool to go out mm -hmm. but four times in a week. It's not good. 
when you got a man at home. Okay. Single she goes people. out four times, basically, He's on average, average four times a week? Oh, th average three. Okay. But a week ago, she went out four times. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But what was going on between them four times? See, he doesn't tell everybody the whole story. Well, no, no, let, let, I'm, I'm gonna let you do that, but you're gonna let, we're gonna have to let him finish first. Where's she going when she's going out? We stay in Palmdale, so there's no clubs. Mm -hmm. So some, it's somebody's house every other night. It's a mm -hmm. kickback. I call right. it a house party, but they call it a kickback. Kickback, yeah. Now, me, I don't care. It's all right. You can go out. I don't mind, but... Four nights in one week? Now, that's only something single people do. What do you need to go out and chill with the same people four nights in one week for? Are you at the kickback four nights, three, four nights no, a week? No, he's lying. He's lying. Maybe twice a week. Uh -huh. But that incident, it was only three times, but he didn't tell you that we was arguing every day. Well, what, what have you been arguing about every we day? We argue about the littlest things. Him washing my son tape. He doesn't do the initiatory father things. He wants to be labeled as his father, but he doesn't do the fatherly duties that he's supposed to do. I'm the one that does everything. I feel like I'm more of a single parent now that he's a part of life than I, I felt when I was taking care of my son by myself. Well, what, what, do, what would you like him to do that he doesn't do? He doesn't help me with anything around the house with Jayton as far as get his clothes out for school, bedtime, anything. But I have to ask him to give Jayden a bath. Mm -hmm. I have to ask him to do the littlest things. Do you both work outside the home? No. Are you a stay-at-home mom? Yes. Okay. Now, you do understand that if you're a stay-at-home mom, you're gonna do more with the kid He's than the guy that's working. He's a stay-at-home dad also. He's, He's at home? Yes. I thought you... Don't you work? No, ma'am. I'm looking for a job. It's kind of hard. For a job. It's oh, kind of hard part -time being, being here and there. The background that I have, so it's not like oh, I can I just go you. out and get a I job. But I try hard I got you. every day. Yeah, I, I give you. him that. He tries to get a job, and mm -hmm. he does little eyes and ends, you know, paint houses and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, he's a home. He's a stay at home dad as much as I'm a stay at home mm -hmm. mom. Are you coming up a little light on the on the on the fatherhood side? I mean, are you having fun with him? But not she just said I was business? a great father, right? So how can I be a great father without doing those things, too? I give my son a bath, I feed my son. Now, when it comes to his clothes, I might not get them because our stuff is still in the suitcase. We just moved down here. But every time she gets mad, oh, she's ready to go. So his stuff is packed, and it might be packed with her. So I don't know exactly where his stuff is at. Well, what kind of things does she get mad about? Anything that I get mad at her about, she flips it on me. It's never no... Whenever I get mad at her about... Anything. It could be the littlest thing. We argued over something that happened three days ago, but we arguing about it again right now. Well, what is it? Something small, like who was over here the other day? Or, yeah, it was just dumb, like... Are, are most of your arguments about what she's doing outside of the home? Yes. Is that the biggest issue that you two have? Yes. Yeah. Regardless of that situation, he did take anything, any and everything that I do. Will you give me a situation where I think... Well, you believe, I think he's lost, he's been controlling and stopping and, and arguing about things that he shouldn't be angry about. Next, what secret reason can Adrian share to explain why he always wants to know where Taja is going? Your mama warned you not to marry your mate. If she was right and divorce is your best option, call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real Relationships in Crisis, Divorce Court continues. So, Ms. Hugo, give me, give me an instance where He's gone off the deep end about something or he's overly controlling. Something that will tell an example of what you've told me. With Adrian, he wants me to t ask him for permission to go out. He wants to know my every move, who I'm with, what I'm doing at that moment. I, he's calling me a hundred million times throughout the time. Or he's calling the person that I'm with if he can't get in contact with me, where you're at. Uh, you're not supposed to be there, you're supposed to be here. Let me ask, do you keep track of her like that? No, Your Honor. Okay. 
I mean, and I'm not saying that that's a wrong thing to do. I would, my, my follow-up question would have been, has she ever done anything or does she do things that make you concerned about where she's going and what she's doing? Yes. Do you think she's cheating on you? Not so far as actually doing it, mm -hmm. but it could happen. She flirts well, it a could lot. Happen. It could happen exactly. if you work at a grocery see, store. It but see, I don't, I don't be on her like that. The reason why I be like, were you going in this, that, and the third? Because for one, she don't know nobody out here, for one. She didn't been through a lot in her life. And when we first got out here, she almost got robbed for her purse when she was walking down the street. So whenever she leave, I want to know where you going, just in case something happened. Because if something happened to you, who going to have to explain this he to our child? That as Not his you, excuse. but me. I'm going to have to explain this to our child. When she go out, I don't bother her. She talking about I bothered her. Well, that's because when she left the one time, it was like 12 o'clock, but she was with my best friend, but she didn't have her key. Everybody in the house was asleep, and I was on my way to sleep. So I wanted to call just to see how long you gonna be. I didn't keep calling you or nothing like that. I, I text one time, see what was up, and that was it. I don't bother her when she goes out. And because when she go out, nine times out of ten, it's with one of my family members. And one that's of my what my issue one of my is, relatives. Why is there a problem? If you're going if out, I'm with, one going of his out with somebody that's close to you, I'm not. I don't have no friends out here. I don't have no family. I moved out here with him and my son, and that's it. And you that's see how it. Upset she is. I understand. Like I'm mm -hmm. tired. Do I'm you know why she's upset? Road. No, I don't. Because of the things that I'm doing is not what I'm doing. She make it seem like it's more than what it is. I'm not doing these things. And I that's my issue. He doesn't never admit to nothing that he he don't feel like he does anything wrong. And then it comes down to he feels though that I should have to stay because of my son. And it's to the point where why should I stay with him if he's not? We've been together for four years, Your Honor. I ain't been on a date since 2011. He don't take me out. He don't do nothing. The only time we go out if it's if it's with all three of us, but we don't go on the one on one on one on one dates. We don't do nothing. Uh, I I think I see where, where you're headed. I think I I think I see the pain that you don't that you see but can't identify where it's coming from. I may be wrong, but I'm gonna put it out there. When divorce court continues, what can Adrian do to make Taja believe that she is safe and loved in their home? If Taja and Adrian could be a little patient with each other and their child, do you think their relationship would last? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. I think what she's feeling and not saying is she doesn't feel like you love her as an individual person, that you relate to her as... Your, your, your little man's mother, and that you don't enjoy her, don't enjoy each other, that you live together, but she doesn't feel like she's in your heart at all. Your Honor, I Is, go out now, now more, more because Hugo, I don't even Hugo, want to Ms. Hugo, let me tell you one thing. I, I think you're a sweet person, Thank but you. I do see part of the problem he's got. You have a lot of feelings and emotions, all of which you... I don't think you've accurately identified. Mm -hmm. And so when you discuss anything, it becomes a big, huge vat of everything. Right. And he can't adequately address that because it's so huge, diffuse, and, and, and large. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I want you to work with him. She does not talk about anything. Any Anytime I come to her like, look, this is how I feel. One time she asked me if she can go out. She just went out the night before. I said, no, I don't care. But then I came back five minutes later and said, well, what if I would have said, well, I don't think you should go? Well, I mean, I would have went anyway. So what was the point in you asking me if I mind if you going out? If you was already had your mind made up, you was going to go anyway. You don't care how I feel. Did that happen? Yeah, it happened that yeah. way. But it happens that way every time. We can't come to each other, and I've told her this plenty of times. We have to communicate. We don't communicate. Every time I say something to her, it turns into an argument. Every time. It's she both ways. goes We're off. Not, and and I, I get that. But I think, Ms. Hugel, 
I think you have trouble identifying why you do things and how you feel and what you're upset about. Well, I know why I go out. Why do you go out? I go out because I'm tired of being in the house with him. He don't take me nowhere. Hey. We don't go nowhere. You know why? Why? Social media, she's single. In the house, we together sometimes. Maybe tomorrow, we not together. She posts pictures. Not of me. Mm -hmm. She might talk about me on social media once every couple months. Me? Everybody knows whether my status stays single or not, but it stays single because she made her single, so automatically mine went single because she was my relationship partner on uh, on Facebook. Oh, so it happened to you automatically? Yeah. yeah. No, it don't. It, it don't you? automatically happen like that. It says what? that he's in a relationship, but it but don't it have my nobody. name. I'm single on Facebook because I'm single. But no, tomorrow she with me. She played games with me like we together. Let me ask you this. I'm gonna skip over this because I think I know what the problem is. I don't know if I can solve it. Mr. Patterson, do you do things with her and make her feel loved and happy? And, and do you engage into... A lot of people get married and they're in the same house, but they don't look to each other for their joy. Do you do look at each other at all for, their, for your joy? No. I used to, but I can't because everything with her is an argument. Judge Lynn Zoller's ruling next. It's time for you to call 1-800-282-1991 to answer today's question. You'll receive some valuable offers. Call now. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Ms. Hugel, I don't think you're going to want to hear what I have to say, but I really want you to try to listen. I'm not telling... You're a good person. You are... I'm pro you're probably a great mother. You're a beautiful woman. And I think that you have more value than you see in yourself. But I am going to say a couple of things to you. Number one is, you need to change how you entertain yourself. All of this kickbacking that you're doing, or the, a kickback community is not a, is, is not a solid community. Everybody's going to that kickback all the time. You, you two have to establish a relationship amongst yourselves. You want to go out to have these kick... This is how you enjoy yourself. He can't... You can't maintain a relationship well, that's right, your primary source of a good time. Can I say something, Your Honor? What? That's just happened within a few, two, three months. What happened to the to three years? We ain't been on a date since 2011. I just moved out here in March. And the only reason why I started going out is because I'm tired of being in the same household as him. It is her going out to the kickback a more recent thing? Yeah, since we've been in California. Uh, okay. But... We've been here for seven months, and this is the reason why she wanted to move to Palmdale. That's where she wanted to be. What kind of relationship did you have when you were where you were before you moved to California? The same. Not really, because that's when we went out. We went out, we went to the movies. I did things with her. I took her did places. You did you guys yeah. I took her to do movies. that? No. Look at her. She's beautiful. Why wouldn't I want to take her out? He... No. He's lying. We ain't been on a date since 2011. And that's when I was taking him out. I would initiate the, let's go to the movies. Let's do this. He don't initiate nothing. Well, you know, sometimes that's how it is. It's not that big a deal. I, you know, my husband, I never want to go nowhere. Baby, would you, let's go. So, no, I, I want to go. Let's go. You know, it's not, you can't be a little girl about a relationship. He's not going to whine and dine you throughout the entire context of your relationship. Your You're going to get right. I've never been that you type of person. You don't listen. I told her. Don't you listen. don't listen. You're not trying to listen. You're not trying to listen to me. So I know you're not trying to listen to him. And, that's what I and I can't help you if you're not going to listen. I'm sorry. And I'm not saying that you're a bad person. You're stuck on what you're not getting, but you won't take a step back and try to figure out why you're not getting it. And I can't do that for you if you're not willing to listen. So I can't help you. You want two tickets to Philadelphia from him. Is that your exit yeah. strategy? And your family's in Philly? Yeah, my mom's in Philadelphia. I, I'm at the point where I just... I had enough. Mm -hmm. I think, Ms. Hugel, you're going to continue to have troubles no matter where you go because I don't think you have a realistic expectation of what a relationship is and mm -hmm. what a family is. And until you find that, whatever guy you get is going to be problematic. And I think that 
You ought to, I'm going to send you to somebody when you leave here to send you in a direction where you need to be, mm -hmm. and you might find that Mr. Patterson is not all that bad of a brother. Uh, I, I know it's... You can't feel good unless you're in control of your life. And I'm going to try to give you some control. That's all I can say to you. I'm going to have you talk to somebody that's going to give you some control. You're looking for other people to make you happy. You're looking to feel OK at the kickback. You're looking for him to. And that's not ever going to work, because they can't satisfy you that way. You have to be whole within yourself. And I don't think you can hear me about that. I can't give you any money, but I do wish you the best. And I do wish you to take some time, back off your position and your pain, and think it through a little bit, and you may come to a better conclusion. But in the interim, there will be no re recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. Adrian and Tanja respect the judge's ruling. And Tanja understands that she has a lot of work to do to overcome her fears. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court. On Divorce Court today. When they first met, she says he lied about everything, but she married him anyway. Now, Andre and Davies have spent a decade together, have three children, and want to call it quits. She says he's a womanizer and a gamer. He says she's disrespectful and belittling. Andre McDaniel and Davies McDaniel have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toller to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Mr. and Mrs. McDaniel, um, you're fighting over a van because you yeah. finally decided to get a divorce after three years of separation. I want to know how you made it as long as you did. <laughs> uh, you say, Ms. McDaniel, that from the day you met him, he did nothing but lie to you. Yes, Judge. Tell me, give me some examples of the things that he told you that you ultimately found were not true. Well, from day one, he's done nothing but lie. I mean, mind you, even in the dating stage, he told me he had a car. Not only did he not have a car, this car was in the shop, and he didn't even have a license to drive a car. He lied about his relationship status. He told me that he was single, and, but he was living with someone. Mind you, an older woman who he tends to always gravitate towards someone who can take care of him. I mean, she had kids as old as him. Um, wow. And she, she, and then they wind up even having a baby together. Like, he was 20-something, and she was, like, almost 50 years old. He lied about his education. I was in school in New Orleans at the time. And, you know, I'm in college. I'm in university. He hadn't even gotten his GED yet. Well, what did he say? He, he said he had graduated from high school, or he said he was he college? He told me he graduated from high school, but mm -hmm. it he came out He got his out GED. That he, he had not gotten it. Oh, he had not gotten no, his GED. He had not. Did you learn about these lies prior to marrying the man? Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> 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 What made you think that a man who tells as many and the magnitude of the lies he told, why would you marry him? Judge, I, before we met, I was, like, on this spiritual awakening. You know, I'm in college, so, you know, you experience all kind of things. I was celibate. You know, I was just being me and just saying that love is love and I love everybody and what it doesn't were you matter. What in college? I was in pharmacy school. You were in pharmacy school? Yes. So you were on a spiritual awakening. Yes, I was and enlightening myself. And you were you myself. were loving life, yes. and knowledge, and Working education, out and exercising, and eating good, just feeling good about everything. Which makes that all the more confounding <laughs> that you would marry a guy who lies to you about everything. Now I did say I was celibate, so you know maybe he gave me that attention. He might have put it on me, and it, it just blew my mind. I guess. <laughs> Well, good for you, uh, uh, Mr. McDaniels. Good for you. 
Uh, <laughs> let me let me talk to you for a moment since <laughs> since we've we've gone in your direction here. Right. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <laughs> Is she accurate about all of those lies you told, or is that not really what happened? Um, some of them are, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. um, when I met her, I was working. Right. You know, it wasn't like I was just a nobody. You know, I was working. Where um, were you working at? I was working at... <laughs> I was, That's the last question you get to ask in here, Ms. Daniels, yes, Mr. Daniels. I was working at McDonald's. I mean, it was a piece of job. Hey, it's a job. Right. There's nothing wrong with working at McDonald's. Exactly. It's better than not working. Don't rag on a man who has a job. If he's got a job, he's got a job, and it's all good. <laughs> uh, now, go ahead. So, at the time, you know, I did tell her lies because I felt like I didn't want her to be all in my space, you know, knowing who I really was. But, um, at Why the time... Why would you not want her to know who you really were? Well, because I grew up, you know, without my father. Um, my mama was on drugs. So, my life was kind of... I, I did me. You know, I, you. I pretty much did me, and I you had to... rose rose up and beyond those things that you were born exactly. into. Can, can, can I give you some advice? Yes. Though? <laughs> yes. The only thing better than who you are is the fact that you could have been so much less. If you tell the whole story, people are even more enamored of you. You right. don't have to hide right. a bad past because right. having a bad past and being a great person. You know what I mean? Thank so you. So you yeah. cool for that? Right. Thank I'm you, gonna yeah. work with you for that. Thank you. What was her? What was your major problem with her? Um, at the time, well, she she, she was lazy. You know, um, oh, that's the uh, thing that you don't see. Oh, you know, uh, uh. always late, um, never on time. I mean, as you saw, even when we stepped up, she was still running her mouth. You know, so um, oh, my God. always late. You know, and at the time, like, I didn't really see it until after years of being married and then you separate, you know, mm -hmm. then you see all the ugly stuff that you didn't see when you was in love, you know, but when you got out of love, you know, then you begin to see all the uh, uh, laziness that right. she has. I also understand that you had, had a bit of trouble with her family. Yes. They came to New Orleans for her graduation. Um, they was all in the hotel room, and they figured they was gonna give me the third degree, you know, because at the time, I didn't finish school, you know, but what she didn't tell you, I got my GED. Now? Um, Mrs. Da McDaniel? Years. Yes, ma'am. I call it the caterpillar effect, Your Honor. You know, she, she only saw the caterpillar, but what she didn't know that the caterpillar turned into the butterfly. Now, I, and, and, and I get that, I, I, but I still want to talk about the family. What was her family doing? Um, that caused you concern. You know, they figured that she should have married a doctor, a lawyer, or somebody, you know, that had an education or that was doing better than I was. Mm -hmm. You know, and plus what she had well, to told them... They, were they a constant irritant? Did they do something or it's just... I mean, because a lot of in-laws have bad opinions about the people that their child marries. They didn't even know me, Your Honor. Uh -huh. it, it, was, it was things that she had told them. So what, so what did they do? Was it just a one-time thing? What happened? Oh, yeah. They, they, they packed me in the hotel room and they just took shots, Your Honor. They so they loaded, grilled you? They loaded up the gun and they just shot every which way. I, I, was, I was ducking from north, south, east, and west. <laughs> <laughs> did, she, did you ever see her family again or was that the end of it? Yes. Uh, like, the next day they had came to the uh, apartment that we was living in, you know, I still welcome them because, you know, I have morals, you know, and mm -hmm. respect. But uh, like I told her, that's her family, so she had to deal with them. Did, mm -hmm. did you put the family in check? Not exactly. Once you married him? Why not? I mean, yeah, once we got married, yes, I was always defending him all the time. He didn't think I did, but I was always defending him. And they no, got sick of... Next, family troubles, money troubles, and trouble with other women are all three tearing this marriage apart. Divorce isn't easy. If you need help with your breakup, call toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court. Real relationships, raw emotion. Testimony continues now. Now, has your family been all in it? I mean, it, you say you've defended them since you've been married, but did... Were they causing trouble? There was a little trouble. Um, 
there was always something being said or even things that had been done. You know, they would even, like, pit my kids, our kids against him. You know, the kids notice, well, he why pit is your, They pit your kids against him? Yeah, because the kids would notice that, you know, he wasn't ever invited to anyone's house or never came around, and so that caused them to ask questions. And, you know, I even had fallen out with some of my relatives because I was being faithful and devoted to him and to our cause. So, yeah, there Is was that true? I mean... Your Honor, what I forgot to tell you was that her family tried to pay me to leave her alone. <laughs> How much? Uh, it, it, it was like some hundreds of dollars that, that <laughs> they paid. <laughs> They wanted you to go, but not, but, but not a thousand dollars. Right, right. <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Now, Ms. Ms. McDaniel, you say that you have concerns about whether or not Mr. McDaniel had cheated on you. Concerns? I know he cheated on me. Well, tell me about that. From day one, one time he went out and kept my car. I had a final at school the next day. It was because he was with a, another woman. That was, you know, my D. Macafella days. You know, that was that was those days. <laughs> your, your, your what? D. Macafella. D. Macafella? <laughs> yes, yes, Your Honor. I was. I was, I was. I was. I was. I would know. look at you, Joe, but I know you don't know what that means. <laughs> no. I don't know what that means. What does D. Macafella mean? Um, I was. I was doing me, Your Honor. No. D Mac a fella. Mac a fella. A fella. <laughs> I swear I'm gonna start a DC diction the divorce court dictionary and D Mac a fella's gonna be in it. D Mac a fella will definitely be in it. How long into the marriage did uh, D Mac a fella run things? Mm -hmm. We we was we was probably married three years or yeah something like three years um, when that all started. Mm -hmm. When it started or you finished? Well, when when you know throughout the marriage um, I stepped out because you know at times you know she was controlling so at like times you know I had to get away or you know occupy my mind with uh, some things How, too. In what manner was she controlling? For instance, I had got my income tax uh, uh, check, and I had wanted a flat screen TV. She told me that we couldn't have a flat screen TV. You know, I wanted internet in, in the house. She told me it was more convenient to go to the library mm -hmm. than to have internet at the house. Mm -hmm. You know, so she, uh, she always wanted to control things. Yeah. Were you economically able to, to really afford these things? We could have afforded it, Your Honor. You could have afforded yes, it. Yes, we only had one child at the time. That was it. And we, we was living in an um, apartment that was like 500, you know, so... How much were you making a month, though? I was making maybe about uh, $1,200 a, a month. You couldn't afford it. Mm. I'm telling you right now, you couldn't afford it. If you got $500 for rent... Right. And you got a kid, you got seven hundred dollars left over for food, gas, you know, all of that kind of stuff. You don't oh, have that money was for included. Flat screen. Still, seven hundred dollars a month for three kid for three people, you can't afford a flat screen mm. TV. You wanted one, but you couldn't. It was afford my it. income tax, though, Your Honor. But you put that in the bank. You, 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 for you know, if you lose your job or if right. if, if heaven forbid the car goes down or the kid gets we sick or you need some new shoes, right. that's what that's for. It's not for flat screen TV. I'm gonna give a <laughs> seminar on disposable income because don't nobody know what it is. <laughs> When Divorce Court continues, are parenting issues and issues between the parents causing their children pain? Do you think Entre defends Davies strongly enough to her family? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now, 1-800-282-1991. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Mr. McDaniels, you say you, have, you had a very important issue with Mrs. McDaniels, which is you felt that she didn't keep the kids clean and neat. Correct. And that, you know, she'd go out looking good and your kids were looking crazy. Correct. So you tell me 
what she was or was not doing with respect to the children? Um, well, this particular day, Father's Day, you know, I came over to get the kids. Um, the kids' I, I clothes wasn't ironed, you know, uh, their hair wasn't combed, you know, so I, I told her uh, uh, about it, because she know how I am, you know, mm -hmm. and she told me, well, you have a different opinion, of, you know, I look at things different. And as you can see, Your Honor, she's all buttered up, you know? <laughs> she's all buttered up, <laughs> you know? Um, you. I feel that my kids should be... Should be buttered up, too. Exactly. Now, Ms. Daniels, would you, would you send the kids to him looking crazy? Judge, I love my children. And of course not. My children are very well taken care of. I mean, sometimes I was slack. I'm a busy woman. I have to get up and fix them breakfast. He comes over already dressed and think everything's just gonna be okay. Well, when you come over, why don't you help and do some of those little things that you want done as opposed to just, you know, coming down on me for it yeah. in front you of me. You know, the you kids. did say they would all they had rusty knees and elbows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get to, you get a little lotion, rub that on there. Exactly. You know, and you can, you, you, you can knock that rust off really easy. I'm a father, y'all. Uh, you know? I'm a father. I'm not a weekend dad. I'm in our kid's life. She can attest to that. And, and, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because you said she said something very hurtful to you mm -hmm. about the nature of your fathering. You had asked her, she said, don't you think I'm a good father? And she said that you were simply decent. Decent. What were you talking about that made you ask that question? And why were you so hurt about the decent remark? I was just asking, and when I did ask it, you know, she said I was a decent father. Now, Yana, I'm more than adequate. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been there since day one, you know. M Ms. McDaniels, why do you think he's only a decent father? There were, there were a lot of things going on where, you know, he may have been out cheating or out playing video games, not taking that time and investing it into the children the way he should have or investing it into our family. So I might have said decent and I, I might have been a little salty Were at the you time. a little less than doting as a father? I mean, decent is, you know, I mean, it's not good, it, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad, but were you super involved? Um, PTA? Football, basketball, teaching them the word of God. Taught my son how to play chess. Spending quality time, not not just time, Your Honor, but spending quality time with my kids. He sounded a little pretty good over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But do you think that womanizing and staying out all night and playing video games and not working is a good example to set for your young sons? Here's what I, mean, I here's things... what I will say to you, Mr. McDaniel's. You know, fathering is not just about spending quality time with their children. When you have two parents and one parent is kicking the other parent in the gut, you know, running around on your wife kicks her in the gut, mm -hmm. you are destabilizing 50% of their foundation. And, and that causes them great difficulty mm -hmm. and causes them great harm. So I believe that she's assessing that entire picture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. You, you, but that goes both ways, like both parents have, in, you know, instilled into our kids. So, right. yes. No, I, I get right. that. I get right. that. But you understood what I said about, exactly. the, about kicking the other two. The, There's a four-legged table. Mm -hmm. You kicking two, two. Of the, two of the legs out, that destabilizes the table. We cripple. No right. matter, yeah, no matter how many books and food and all you mm -hmm. got on top of the table, you right. destabilize. That's all I'm trying to say. Right. I got you. Judge Lynn Zoller's ruling next. It's time for you to call 1-800-282-1991 to answer today's question. You'll receive some valuable offers. Call now. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Mrs. McDaniels, I understand why things ended. I, I don't think you're a bad guy, Mr. McDaniels. I, I, I thought you were a bad guy when I, when I read your <laughs> petition, but I, don't, I, I think you're a guy that is in progress. You are in growth. The facade is wonderful. Mm. The heart has to be there. And then the next time you get a woman, I don't know if you got one now or not, mm. don't tell me. <laughs> don't say I do if you, if you really don't. I loved her, though, Yana, when I married her. I understand that. You know? I, I, I believe you. I believe you, Ms. McDonald. Well, why don't you tell me why you believe that that car should remain in your possession? Your Honor, I held a job down for seven years, mm -hmm. paying all the bills, rent, car insurance, gas, and mind you, both of our names is on the title, but I believe that I should keep the van. It, we took out an $18,000 loan, and I say I would pay, I paid about 97% of that. Wow. 
So why shouldn't it be mine? Okay, Mr. McDaniels, your yes. response to her, her belief that she should have the car. Um, when we purchased the van, like, she wasn't even working. She had just started working when we purchased the van. We have both paid on the van, but my thing is this, Sharana. She already has a, a 2005 car. It's times where I need to, you know, pick up the kids or bring them to baseball practice or uh, football That's practice. That's not my fault or my responsibility. Mrs. McDaniel, let, let, let me ask you this. Is that the only car that you have? Or do you have another car? She has another car. You have two cars? The van isn't even working. And yes, I do have one, a car that is working. <laughs> But it should be at my disposal to do whatever I want to do with it. If I want to sell it for 2000 I should be able to do that because I put the most money and invested the most into it. I shouldn't be responsible for him getting That's his children to and from. That's not how it works. Let me tell you how it works. You get married, you combine your thing, whoever made more money, this, that, or the other thing, but you divide those major assets in an equitable fashion. You know, if the van was your only mode of transportation and you run around with the kids, he wouldn't get anywhere near it. But you got a car and it's working. You don't get to keep both of them. Uh, Mr. McDaniel, continue on your growth. Ms. McDaniel, next time you get a guy, don't go for the line, go for the look. <laughs> What's he doing? What's he doing? What, don't listen to what he's saying. Yes, Watch what he's doing. And then and only then, if he's doing the right thing for a long period of time, then and only then do you hook up with him. Judgment in favor of Mr. McDaniels. It is so wonderful. Andre and Davies respect the judge's ruling and are trying to become better role models for their children. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.